Scenario. Mm-hmm. Big karaoke night. Okay. All your friends and family, just like all your favorite people, right? It's the end of the night, you know, you're having a good time. You've been killing it on the mic, naturally. Uh, uh, obviously. <laughs> everybody turns to you for the big finale. What are you what are you gonna pick for everybody to sing? The big sing along. Oh I mean if it's a big karaoke night. You know, probably had a few drinks, you know, mm-hmm. confidence is building. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I usually do a lot of Johnny Cash. Okay. You know, throughout the night, that's kind of my bread and butter. All right. It's kind of okay. my range. All right. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think uh, Closer, I, I took this one from my sister. She used to do it a lot. Uh, I think it's a good end of night song. Yeah. I would do sometimes uh, uh, Beth from uh, Kiss. Oh, dude. I don't know if I know it by by name. I'm sure I've heard it. It's like, you know. Me and the boys will be playing all night. Oh you know? yeah, okay, I got you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I I, I would have pegged you for like a like I don't stop believing. Oh, something, something hard rock. Yeah. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe. It's okay. Uh, I don't know if I have a go to. Yeah. It's I guess that's kind of like a slow like, uh, you know, end yeah, of the yeah. night. But yeah, uh, yeah. it's yeah. an anthem though. People it, sing it. Yeah. yeah people yeah. get into. It. What about what about you? Um, I don't know about like a, like a finale. I have some stories. I have some karaoke stories. Yeah. Um, I know that uh, you know a, a couple of actor friends uh, and me like we went to like a karaoke night and they were in a class and their assignment was to um, was to like perform karaoke to kind of like get like their nerves. You know. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. It was just like a like a character development like exercise, I guess. Uh, it was weird though because they made them like pay for karaoke. Like that was part of their <laughs> assignment. Um, yeah, I didn't get up there, dude. I didn't have the guts to to go up there no? and sing. No, but uh, but I did have a a time like at a friend's um place, and I you know, I I thought that you know when I was surrounded by like a, a few more people that I knew that I could like grab the mic and like get into it and when it's not a bunch of strangers yeah yeah and i'm, I'm looking through the catalog and i'm like oh, i don't really like know any of these songs but i have like a jazz background and i thought um you know i thought what a wonderful world like louis, oh, yeah. yeah louis armstrong like i thought you know i thought that'd be funny like um but but it was like really not funny it was very sentimental and like i, I like i started singing it and like <laughs> and people were just kind of like like tuning in way more than i wanted them to yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, dude, I thought this was like going to be because people were doing other things. You know, it wasn't focused on like karaoke. Like, you know, there was other music even happening. Like it was like one of the side things. And everyone just stopped. There, everyone dude. just like halted. <laughs> and I was like, what? Like, don't. Um, yeah, it made it really awkward. What made it more awkward is um, this other guest from the party. He was like, oh, no, you got to do like the voice and and he grabs the mic like and, uh, yeah uh, and he uh, starts doing the he, raspy like the mm-hmm. louis armstrong like tone and and i was like oh okay well i guess you could just do it <laughs> like, <laughs> and just hand it yeah, over the mic. He, he killed it i just handed over the mic dude he just started doing this louis armstrong impression and like then it turned like hilarious so i was like all right have you ever done like the karaoke rooms as opposed to like just like an open mic no no No. i've never tried that no those those can be fun because then it's just like you rent it it's just you and your friends okay a little bit more uh it's a little easier to get the confidence up yeah okay (laughs) i I should try that yeah well our next guest you know started music at a young age and she used karaoke to help build her performing skills and kind of build that charisma in front of people Right now, I'm actively trying to co-write with other people because it helps you expand your horizons because I know what I sound like and I know I'm going to keep doing the same things over and over again. But having someone else come in gives you a different perspective on things. It definitely enriches the songwriting process. All right, we're back in the studio with singer, songwriter and multi-instrumentalist Sianti. Thanks for being here on the podcast with us. Welcome. Of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we want to hear um, right from the beginning how you fell in love with music and how your journey's been so far. Sure. So a lot of singers will tell you this, but they started singing before they could talk. I was the same thing. Don't mean to brag about it, but <laughs> I guess it's easier to like just tell melodies before you can actually speak words. 
but I've always been interested in music. I was a part of the school choir. I loved karaoke. I was going out every night trying to perform out as much as I could. Back then I was in India. And I never had professional training in any kind of uh, instrument or even voice. But I always tried to do whatever I could by myself. Like I was going through YouTube videos. My um, singing teacher in school, like my music teacher, he was also very encouraging. And he was the first one who told me that I could do something in music. So that was always at the back of my mind. And during the pandemic, I had time to process things and get back into music. And that's when I started writing my own songs. So it was during the pandemic that I realized that I had a flair for writing and I did a lot of virtual open mics, a lot of encouragement and support. And that's when I decided that I had to come out to L.A. and do what I wanted to do. Oh, amazing. And when you were doing um karaoke, like uh, how old were you when you started that? Like that's such a nerve wracking thing, even for me as an adult. <laughs> today but to it sounds like perform. you were doing it yeah yeah it sounds like you were doing it at a young age yeah i was in middle school okay and i started going out on stage and performing i used to perform uh, at these musical events in school like musical nights and stuff and it was a lot of fun awesome what was your go-to karaoke song yeah oh my god <laughs> TikTok by kesha oh right yeah <laughs> That's energy. Marcus? That's vibrant. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I don't have one. Dude. You don't have one? No. <laughs> uh, I'm too. I'm too nervous to even get up there. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm. I'm full some prison blues. Yeah, some Shana, blues. Shana I don't Cash. know. Yeah, I would probably try to do like a, a sing along that like everybody knew or something, and then I would be the person to like mess up the lyrics here. <laughs> <laughs> so you said musicals. Um, tell me about like some of those that you've uh, played. Do you remember any like the roles that you that you played when you were little? Oh no, I did. I say musicals. Maybe not. I said musical night. Musical night. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was mostly like people getting up on stage and singing cover songs. Right. Okay. So I used to do that a lot. Okay, cool. Well, you said you're from India. Mm -hmm. You haven't been out here in the States that long. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand, you also weren't originally studying music. You were studying computer science or computer engineering. Yes, so that's what, right. So uh, what, what drove you in that direction to begin with before you decided to, you know, put that aside and, and move into music? Well, computer science is a lucrative career. Mm -hmm. There was good money in that, and I had good test scores, so I could get whatever course I wanted, and everyone told me that computer science would be good for my career, for my future. It's like a stable career. There are a lot of opportunities. It's a growing field. So I was like, well, why not try it? I had a few computer science classes in school, and they weren't that bad. So I was like, maybe I can do it. But there's a lot of math involved in it, and I'm not very good at math. I hate math. So um, I liked some courses in computer science. Like when I was in school, I liked maybe one or two of the 20 I had to do. But eventually, as I started to do internships and some of the bigger projects in class, I realized that maybe I wasn't cut out for it. It mm. wasn't like I hated it. It's just that I wasn't waking up every day super excited to sit at my computer and code. Mm. I remember that there is a quote by Steve Jobs something along the lines of if you're waking up too many days in a row not excited about what you're doing then it's time to quit that so mm. that's exactly what i did okay I, I couldn't agree more yeah uh but like like you said um you know the computer science or engineering route uh there's definitely a lot of stable careers in that nowadays switching over to you know being an artist which you know is very often you know gig to gig you know it's uh there's nothing guaranteed yes. in, in this field um, and can, it can change, you know, from one minute to the next. So, I mean, obviously moving from India he here to help pursue that uh, passion is a big step. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a big risk. Uh, what, did, what did your family think of uh, making that transition? They were not too happy about it, especially since I'm the only child. But they were supportive. I mean, they couldn't really do anything about it. Like I was hell bent on doing whatever I wanted to do. And they support me in every way they can. Like they still support me. But I, I would say that they were concerned about my future and understandably so, because um, it's not, there's no guarantee in being an artist, but there is guarantee in some of the other more stable careers like the computer science uh, field or I used to be a software engineer and most people don't understand why I quit that stable job and I'm doing what I'm doing. But they're just concerned and I understand why they're concerned, but they are supportive. Yeah. And no regrets. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> well, um, do you feel like any of your um, any of your practice, like as a, um, a software engineer or like in the, the computer realm, like has been applied to to like your musicality a little bit? Because um, you that, know, or your process? Yeah, yeah. How you work? I know you say that you hate math, but I mean, there are like a lot of uh, similar like um, like patterns and like routines like in music um, mm-hmm. that are like sort of like mathematical. I guess it inadvertently affects my music. I mean, I haven't directly thought, oh, I'm using the skill from computer science. But I guess the way I think, like some of the logical patterns, even when I'm like sheet reading music and stuff, which I'm learning to do, I think it requires you to use certain parts of your brain that are more like logical or analytical. Mm -hmm. And since I have already used those parts of my brain, I guess it helps me process music in a different way, if you will. But yeah, I would say I I think analytically, um, I I think logically, I sometimes take numbers into considerations, especially like, you know, the beats, measures and stuff. So I guess in that way, yeah. Yeah. Well, you've been out in L.A. now for what, about a year? A year, yes. And you're also studying at USC Mm -hmm. for music business. Is that correct? Yes. So the program is officially called Communication Management. But within that, I'm focusing on entertainment and specifically music. So it's more like music business. So with your with with your career and where you see yourself going, uh, how do you see yourself applying that? Well, it's good to be savvy uh, with the business side of things because I've seen a lot of artists who just want to focus on their creative work, and I totally get that. But if you want to make money off of your music, you got to know how the industry runs. And having knowledge of that is very helpful. So, you know, balancing the creative side as well as the business side is what I'm doing right now, and I think it's immensely helpful, especially since I go out to a lot of events, meet a lot of people in the industry who are like actually with labels and stuff. And it helps me see firsthand how the industry runs. So having knowledge of that because of what I'm studying is really helpful. And um, how has your your transition been with connecting, like making relationships with uh, with people out here in L.A.? Like the first year I know, like for me, when I came out here, it was a little rough. I didn't have anybody to like turn to really. I knew a couple people. But it was like very difficult to like build that network of musicians and like minded artists. How are you transitioning with that? I'll start off with an incident. I mean, or or rather an event that happened when I came here. So um, I was doing a lot of virtual open mics, like I mentioned. And at one of these open mics, I came across a couple people who lived in L.A. Back then I was in India and I was like, I'm coming over to L.A. And they were like, sweet, we'll meet you at the airport. And they met me at the airport and they gave me my guitar, which I currently have. Oh, wow. Yeah, I couldn't bring my own guitar because I had to buy a flight ticket for it, which I obviously didn't want to. But after I landed here, they gave me my guitar. They helped me settle in and they like helped me buy my mattress and stuff. It was really nice. So, yeah, they were literally strangers I was seeing on my computer screen. And then I finally met them in person and they were the nicest people. But I have been doing a lot of open mics ever since then. I try to go out to as many musical events as I can. Just Google musical events around me, open mics around me. And I just go out to these events and... I've met so many wonderful people. Jumping back to the pandemic a little bit, um, you said you kind of made some some connections that really helped you when mm-hmm. you got here. Uh, you know, giving you a guitar and kind of getting you settled—that's that's amazing. What uh, what were you doing during that pandemic? Where how were you finding those people, and how are you kind of uh, getting into those groups? I came across this app called Meetup, and that was purely by chance. I just wanted to meet up people in my area because I was feeling very isolated. And at that time, the pandemic was kind of like, you know, settling down a little bit. Things were opening up. So I was like, maybe I can meet other musicians around me. So I just Googled it randomly and I found the app called Meetup. And then I discovered that you could literally meet anyone anywhere in the world through this app. And there were so many cool groups. So I joined a bunch of them. I'm a part of more than 100 groups on Meetup. Mm. And I was attending all these virtual open mics every single day. So I was doing multiple virtual open mics every day. And I met people from all over the world. So now I have friends in every corner of the world. It's really That's cool. That's awesome. That's really cool. Is there any any bad experiences with that or, or funny stories? Um, Not really, except for the Zoom bombers. Like, they just turned out of nowhere. And, you know, they just 
Zoom bombed our meetings sometimes, which was a little weird. But other than that, it was all good. Okay, that's interesting. I've, I've never, I've never heard that term yeah, before. Zoom bombing. I kind of want to hear like, a, like some of those stories. Like, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I've, I've been in like a lot of meetings and like a lot of like group chats and stuff like that. But I've never had anybody do that. I guess. So, like, you have any stories? Like, oh yeah, sure. Um, so these Zoom links were easily accessible mm. could, like anyone could go onto these websites and just get the link click on it and join the meeting mm. so i guess some folks decided it would be fun to just join the meeting and just you know shout out racial slurs and Whoa. disrupt the meetings and play like porn on the screen so that's what they did and they thought it would be fun i don't know but that's their idea of fun they just disrupted our meetings so sometimes we had to adopt measures like Locking the room or enabling waiting rooms and identifying these people and not allowing them to enter the Zoom rooms anymore. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we had to do that. It'll deal with that a little bit. Yeah, that's so unfortunate. Like when you're trying to like build a like a network of like people and then somebody comes in and tries disrupts to like, it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I know how awkward it, can, awkward it can be even when just like my whole family tries to do a Zoom together. Oh, and there's yeah. like 12 people from your family that you haven't talked to in years. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's just kind of staring at and you. Some of them look like Zoom bombers. You yeah. Know, <laughs> you know, while, like, yeah. Yeah. like I don't recognize you. <laughs> well, I want to go back to I know you said that, you know, music came to you like at a really early age. Age. Mm -hmm. um and it sounds like you've always like sort of been like surrounded by it but do you recall like uh like a moment where like you knew you wanted to like um like pursue music or like was there like an influence like growing up like someone who played guitar or, like saying that you really looked up to when i was growing up i was listening to a lot of um artists of the 2010s like kesha like i already mentioned akon a lot of the Disney stars, all right. like they, they were doing all their stuff on Disney, like they were actors and actresses and they were also doing a lot of music. And I was influenced by a lot of that, like Hannah Montana. I was going to say Miley like Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Demi <laughs> Selena Gomez, Demi Lovato, Jonas Brothers, all of them. A lot of Justin Bieber too, like a lot of girls in my class were like huge fans of his. Mm -hmm. So I, I was growing up listening to a lot of that. And regarding when I realized that I wanted to be a musician, I would say it was a gradual process. Like as I was participating in all these events at school, my friends, my classmates, my teachers told me that I had a flair for it. I had a talent and I should continue pursuing it. None of them mentioned that I should take it up as a profession, but they said that I should keep at it. And I was like, well, I like this and I think I'm reasonably good at it so i might as well make a career out of it because i couldn't see myself really enjoying anything else and i tried a bunch of things after that didn't really enjoy anything kept coming back to this mm -hmm. well i'd love to hear more about your your kind of songwriting style your writing process and um you know what what your sound is like sure so when i started off the lyrics came to me really easily they still do so it's usually words first for me and then I try to come up with chords to go with the words and try to sing them to the chords I play on my guitar and come up with melodies. But lyrics definitely come to me really easily. Like I could be just thinking about something and then I pull out my phone and start taking notes and those eventually become lyrics. So it's always words first for me. But I've been trying different approaches because I don't want to be stuck uh, on one thing. So I've been trying top lining, just finding random melodies on the internet and trying to write to that to see if it inspires anything. What is, can you tell me what top lining means? Um, sure, so you just come up, like you find an instrumental on the internet or anywhere really for mm -hmm. that matter. Once you have the instrumental, you just play it and try to sing words to whatever's playing. Okay. So you have the music first and then you try to come up with words that go the with music. the music. Yeah. That fit into the rhythm. Yeah, I actually Sorry. haven't heard that term either. I'm I do that all the time. Music a little right over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So um, it sounded like you listened to a lot of American artists mm -hmm. and, you know, Disney influences and things growing up. Do you have any of your, like, own cultural, you know, aspects that you like to bring into your sound as well? Again, I would say it's not something I do consciously, but definitely maybe unconsciously it affects the way I make music because I grew up listening to a lot of uh, local artists back where I was and I was also singing in different languages back then all of them were covers of course I can't really write in any language other than English because I'm not really f as fluent in any other language but I would say the sound choices melodic uh, choices all of that 
maybe they're influenced by what I grew up listening to. I don't really um, hearken back to them consciously, but maybe they affect me unconsciously. I don't know. Yeah. And you talked about like trying like different like processes and, and things like um like what, what what are some of those like and how do you like choose what direction does it matter what genre of the song or what the the type of the song like which direction or which process you you go about right so one example would be like using different um chord variations on the guitar like i try to use power chords a little more now so my songs are more like rock sounding before nice. that i was always using like open chords and always the one four five so they were like very plain pop but now I try to incorporate more power chords and also I use more bar chords. So that gives it a different sound. It's more a little more rock. So I try to keep doing that just so it's not like the same plain thing over and over again. Okay. So stuff like that. Also, when I'm top lining, I try to use like um, tracks from different genres, like maybe more hip hop um, oriented or even like bluesy sometimes. Just so I can, you know, hear things differently. And eventually it turns out to be a pop track because that's like my main thing. Yeah. But it definitely helps me think differently at times. Yeah, I think it's important to like um, verse yourself in like other genres because mm -hmm. they're like so connected, like in a yeah. lot of ways. So like and uh, yeah, sometimes you're influenced from like, um, like you said, a hip hop or like a rock song. Mm hmm. And pop also draws from every genre, so yeah. it's it's good to be hip with every genre. Yeah, of not not put yourself in a box. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And I was also growing up listening to a lot of rock, like Linkin Park, Green Day, and all of that. Yeah. So that's my jam. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely influences my style. Yeah. Well, you're you're working on a new album right now, is that correct? Yes. What uh, what can we expect with the new album? When is it coming out? I haven't really. Uh, set a release date for it yet i'm still in the process of recording it i've recorded a few a few more to go but i'm having a tough time trying to figure out a common thread to tie all the songs in together and that can be a curse as well as a blessing i mean it's it's tough to try to make all the songs sound similar because you want to put them on an album because yeah. that's almost like you know you're trying to restrict yourself but also it's good to have a common thread because otherwise it'll be like some random songs just thrown together. So I'm trying to figure out. I'm like in the, the theme. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm in the process of figuring out a common theme for all the songs on the album. And that's a tough part of having an album because if it's a single, you can do whatever you want to do. But if it's an album, there has to be something to hold them together. Yeah, for sure. I want to talk a little bit about like when you when you perform uh, mm -hmm. like on stage. Have you performed with like other like a band like behind you? Too? Yeah, a lot of venues provide yeah, yeah. backing bands. So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like what's your experience with like performing solo like versus a band? And do you like one more than the other? I would say they're both interesting and I wouldn't really prefer one over the other. But when I'm performing solo, it's so much easier because mm -hmm. i can control everything yeah. like i can control the tempo i can control the pace i can control the mic placement i can control everything uh but if i'm with a band it, i really have to plan with what everyone else is doing and sometimes it, it can be something unexpected mm -hmm. and i have to just like play along with it because i can't just stop and be like I don't know what you're doing because that's not a possibility in the middle of a performance. So sometimes the song starts out really slow when I have to like take it slow, even though it's not what I usually do. So when I'm playing with a band, there's there's a lot more going on and I don't have a control over a lot of factors. But that's great because it's more like, you know, I, I love the collective energy when I'm playing with other musicians. Yeah, yeah. I feel like when you're on the stage with like other people, you can like feed off of each other's yeah. energy too. That that's can, really like, cool. that can drive the performance too mm -hmm. yeah well speaking of that when you write songs have you ever collaborated with somebody i was gonna come to that i'm trying to do that a little more i'm taking a songwriting course at school and that involves co-writing with other people mm -hmm. so i've been doing that a little more i tried doing it in the past um i did co-write but i didn't really release any of those songs so they're more like half-baked ideas still lying around and I okay. might go back to them. But right now I'm actively trying to co-write with other people because it helps you expand your horizons because I know what I sound like and I know I'm going to keep doing the same things over and over again. But having someone else come in gives you a different perspective on things and um, 
it definitely enriches the songwriting process. So yeah. I'm I'm in the process of doing that right now. Okay. I mean, were there some like hardships? Like you said that some of those um projects are just like half baked. Like did you run into like some obstacles working with other people? Um not really. So I was doing them over Zoom. So I I mean, we we met, we started writing, but the ideas are there, the songs are there, but we never really recorded them or released them. So they're just there. We just bounced off of each other's ideas. And we have the songs, but it's just that we didn't really do anything with it. Like we never performed it together or mm. we didn't record it. So that's what I meant. Okay. You mentioned that you take a lot of like notes when you song, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you talk about having like these other like projects that may need to be like finished or you might come back to them mm -hmm. i kind of want to talk about like your organization like process like how important that is to just like log everything like keep track of like all your stuff or like um like, like how do you find yourself like going back to a project that you haven't finished just yet or that you want to continue every once in a while i just go through all the notes i take and i make sure i do it on all all on different documents because not all ideas are the same but um, I just go through them uh, regularly and try to stitch all the common ideas together. And also I do a lot of themed songwriting challenges. And also for my class, I sometimes need to come up with songs that are based around a specific theme. Mm. So that really helps me because then I can dig into this treasure trove of ideas and see which ones I can pull out and maybe weave into the theme. Yeah. So that helps to have like a starting point, a theme maybe, or even like a word. And then I can go in and pull out everything that could possibly relate to this word and then try to stitch everything together. Mm. Yeah, that sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really fun. What um, can you recall some of those like uh, those subjects or those themes that you've had to like write like songs for? Sure. So the last one I wrote for was uh, based around cards. So it was interesting because in the song I the, the part about cards comes only in the bridge you know like i want to play my cards right it's it's about a relationship it's about things going wrong but then you want a second chance and then you're like can i get a second chance because i want to play my cards right so that's just an idea a motif that comes in just one part of the song but once i had that i started thinking about how i could like build the entire song like just the cards idea helped me come up with ideas mm -hmm. So yeah, that was that was the last thing I did. Oh, so let me get uh, let me get this straight. I want to go back. Mm -hmm. the The word was just cards. Uh -huh. Okay, and then you took so it. You could have taken it at any many different yeah. ways. And, okay, mm -hmm. and then you took it as like like the saying, like playing mm -hmm. my cards right, mm -hmm. and turned it into like a yeah. relationship. That's really clever. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. Those are those are really uh, fun creative exercises. Too. Yes, uh, I'm I'm studying film also right now at mm -hmm. UCLA and. We're doing a lot of those things in my directing class too with our projects um you know you have a theme or you have an idea and you know everyone has to make a film on it and you just see how different mm -hmm. also everybody's projects are it's it's, right. it's cool just having one word helps you interpret it in different ways like there's no restrictions on how you can interpret it so that really helps mm -hmm. and for my songwriting class right now we are trying to come up with a thing and it could be anything, but it has to be like the central motif of the song. You can think of songs like Cardigan by Taylor Swift, like that's a thing, but you know, it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. Also Flowers by Miley Cyrus. It's right, based right, around right. a thing, but yeah. So going back to your um, project and your, your debut album, like do you, are you using that like process to try to like glue all of your ideas together? For the individual songs, yes. I'm trying to still think of a common theme because I already have recorded some of my songs. So it has to be relevant to the already recorded songs. And somehow I have to have something common for the upcoming ones too. So yeah, it's it's about going back to what I already have. Like I have 70 songs, but I don't know which ones to pick from that. So I'm also in the process of writing more songs because um, I don't know if I want to pick the first song that I ever wrote because I've right, you know, right. changed so much since then. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Well, you said your your writing your process usually starts with words. Mm -hmm. Do you find that you're pulling mostly from past experiences? Um, are you using like visuals? What's kind of inspiring those words? I would say most of my songs are definitely inspired from personal experiences, but they are not generally what they seem. Like I sing a lot about relationships, but they are like I draw inspiration for those songs from different places. 
For instance, I dropped and broke my laptop the other day. Oh, yeah, it's happened to me. Oh yeah, <laughs> like the Several screen times. was completely <laughs> shattered. It still works, fortunately, but the screen is like completely shattered. Mm. And I was like, okay, I need to write a song about this because I was driving myself nuts. I was like, why don't I take proper care of my things? So I was like, okay, let me write a song. So in the song, I frame it like a relationship where I'm like, I'm sorry, I didn't take care of you. I let you fall. I let you break and all of that. But mm. it's more like, you know, a person. Mm. It's like personifying the thing. So. But you're using that emotion from mm -hmm. the event that happened. Right. Yeah. I like that. Oh, that's really cool. So jumping a little bit back to what you're doing in school and kind of your focus on more the business aspect of music, I kind of want to hear... A little bit more on your your philosophy on that you know where you think things are at in the music industry and kind of what if you have any advice for people or what you think they should really be focusing on in that in that aspect well i would say focus on being the best you can and connecting as much as you can with your audience because i know most indie artists want to get signed to a label at some point like one of the big labels and the way they do it is look at the number of fans you have, look at the number of streams you have, like it's all about numbers. Mm -hmm. So you got to get those numbers up. And the only way you can do that is not through like, you know, stream bots and stuff, but by developing genuine connections with your fans, like go out and play as much as you can at all these local venues, connect with as many musicians as you can. Like networking is so important in this industry. It's mm -hmm. who you know. So I would urge people to like go out and meet as many people as possible and also focus on making the best art you can because really at the end of the day nothing beats good music mm -hmm. but like you said it's a industry about people and connecting yes. with people mm -hmm. so that's, that's, you know. that's a huge aspect totally yeah and it, i mean it sounds like you had some like really positive experiences with meeting people um virtually right um but how does that compare to you being like in person, like at school, like at USC? When you're meeting people virtually, you can meet people from a lot of different places. So that's one cool aspect about the virtual thing. Like I was meeting people from Australia, from London, Canada, South America, so many different places. At USC, it's really cool because the environment, like the atmosphere is so um, energetic, like the People are so talented. There's like students from all over the world. Everyone's super talented at what they do. Uh, the, the energy is really cool. You don't really get that virtually. Like you see people on the screen, but you don't really get the energy of people, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So being at USC has really helped me. I've, I've met a lot of people who have helped me in my career. And I am where I am today because of a lot of these people. So uh, also the process of like creating art is so much different when you're in person with another person in the room, uh, like you're riffing off of each other's ideas. You can do that virtually too, but um, it's really different because the way you hear things are different on Zoom versus in person. Right, yeah, for sure. I can say um, from my experience uh, attending university, one of uh, my like favorite things was just getting in the room with other musicians and mm -hmm. like playing. Like we would write our songs and we'd get a group of people like, hey, can you read for a second? And we'd try to see what that sounded like um, mm -hmm. live. And we had, you know, support from our professors. We would get sent out at a venue to be able to like do a gig mm -hmm. and like, you know, perform our little set of like original songs, like in front of like peers and just people like in the community. What are some experiences that you've had like um, with your with your professors and with your like classmates and stuff? Some of the events on campus are really cool. I would say that's one of the best parts of all this in-person thing because um, I, I get to meet other musicians who are just like me, hear them in person. Like we have a lot of um, musical events on campus, like concerts and stuff. Okay. So I try to participate in those as much as I can. It's really inspiring to see all these different people in different genres and everyone is super talented, especially those in the music program. Oh my God, they're so good. <laughs> um, but that and also our professors are really helpful. They suggest events to us that we can go to and uh, volunteer at. Okay. Um, I was at the BMAC Gala volunteering uh, for the event, like helping set up the space, uh, making sure all the the goods the gifts were in place and stuff like that 
And I got to meet so many cool people and see how events run, like how, how these events actually are hosted, what goes behind the scenes, all of that. That was really cool. I also volunteered uh, for Cub Zero at the recent thing that was held on Hollywood Boulevard, like the DJ concert by Chris Lake and Fisher. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, I missed that. I was out of town. <laughs> My buddy showed me videos. really so, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. cool. So they closed off uh, Hollywood Boulevard between Kahalanga and Vine. And it was so cool. Yeah. Like 11,000 people there. It was really cool. Um, yeah, I was awesome. working with Cub Zero because, again, uh, we look at a lot of things that go on during the event, but not really what goes on before the event or after the event. So I was involved in cleaning up the space after the event. We had to like sort through the trash and make sure that all the reusable cups, we tried to use reusable cups for the venue for sustainability. Mm -hmm. And we made sure that we retrieved all of that from the trash. So um, it was really a very interesting experience to see all the work that goes on behind the the scenes for these events. Yeah, yeah. And And the thought that goes into each part of the process, like yeah sorting the garbage even right right down to that kind of thing. right and it was a great initiative and i'm so happy to be involved in all of this like within the music space there's so much you can do yeah there's so many events going on in la and Mm -hmm. music film it's it's really a almost too much yeah (laughs) hard to do it all but it's an inspiring place to find those kind of yeah for sure we understand that you brought a piece of music that uh of yours that you wanted to share yeah yep okay yeah let's get into it we want to hear it Yeah. Oh man, I love those synth sounds, dude. Yeah. That's some of my favorite stuff, really. Takes you <laughs> That's cool. Well, where can everybody hear your your music and um and find you at? You can find me on all streaming platforms. I go by Sianti, like S Y A N T E. So that's where um, I'm, I'm Sianti on all streaming platforms. You can also find me on all socials like TikTok, Instagram. Instagram is where I usually post about my upcoming live shows and stuff. Okay. Um, so yeah, just, just look out for that. And I'm also in the process of building my website, so that'll be up very soon. Okay, nice. And that song that you just shared, Mm -hmm. um, what was the title on that one? It's called Stranded. Stranded? Mm Mm-hmm. And who did you make that with? So I'm with an indie label called Bad Self, and this was my first song, my debut song with them. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, we can't wait to hear more and what's coming for you and uh, yeah. come check out your show. Thank you. I appreciate that, it. For that debut album. Can't yeah. wait. <laughs> thank you. Dante, thank you for being here. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you.